Hey, I know we're covering a lot in this week's episode. The subject can be a little dense, and there are things you're worried about missing. Don't worry, we've got you covered. If you ever feel like you've missed something important on Focus Fire Chat, never fear, we have show notes that you can read over on thelornetwork.com. Thelornetwork.com is a place to find all the episodes and their show notes, but also articles about the lore of other games, TV series, books, and other franchises in general. That is thelornetwork.com. T-H-E, lorenetwork.com. Welcome to Focus Fire Chat. Explore together. Welcome to Focus Fire Chat, recorded live on August 30th, 2019, over on twitch.tv slash focusfirechat. As we continue our discussion over the dangers of Gambit, this particular episode will serve as what we lovingly call the advanced session for the week's exploration. Congratulations to those who signed up for a deeper dive. Before we go any further, however, let's run through a quick introduction of who all we have with us on the show. As always, this is your host, Blue Crew 86. And this is the girl with the mostest, Green Eye Music Lover. It's wow. going to change every time. It's literally every time. <laughs> that is my goal. <laughs> chat, chat. Well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> yeah, let's not read Transmit that. fire. <laughs> <laughs> and, la- and last but definitely not least in the hot seat as guest co host, we have our good friend Teej. Teej, how are you doing? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm doing better now, I guess. Man. <laughs> It's going to be one of those podcasts. <coughs> I'm ready. Oh, let's do it. Oh, man. So I know everyone's looking forward to diving into this part of the discussion, so let's get right to it. Um, I'm going to take a quick moment to chat about this week's Lost Lore. So this week, I wanted to take some time to discuss one of the deeper connections that exists between reality and the digital universe of Destiny. And in light of this week's topic, I thought it'd be a good chance to take a closer look at the philosophy of the concept of balance. So bear with me while we meander through this tangent just a little bit. So the philosophy of balance is a, in a metaphysical or conceptual sense, balance is used to mean a point between two opposite forces that is desirable over purely one state or the other. Uh, so it's such as the balance between the metaphysical law and chaos. Uh, law by itself being overly controlling, chaos by itself being overly unmanageable. So you can also see this kind of a comparison to light and darkness, if you will. Balance is the point that minimizes the negatives of both. More recently, the term has come to refer to a balance of power between multiple opposing forces. So it's not just a binary system, it's often more points. Lack of this balance, lack of balance in this power is generally considered to cause aggression by stronger forces towards the weaker force that are less capable of defending themselves. So, and when you take a step back, so that's, that's just like general concept. But when you take a step back and you look at it from within philosophy, this is where the idea of moral balance comes in. And this, this concept, this idea exists in a variety of forms. One of the more famous is that of the golden mean, which was held strongly by Greek philosophers. So you have Aristotle, Plato, and a group called the Pythagoreans. Uh, Pythagoreans, you guys might recognize that term, A plus B equals C, all that nonsense. Uh, but Pythagoreans were actually really an interesting group. Uh, and if you haven't looked into them, I'd actually really encourage it. It was kind of an interesting dive into history. But they were known to relate moral excellence with mathematical perfection. And in, so in addition to applying the concept to not just ethics, but they also applied it to political thought as well. Another famous view is that of Nirvana or Samadha in Buddhism, uh, which was also known as the Middle Way, or that of the Doctrine of Zhang in Confucian Teachings, which is also translated, I believe, to be the Middle. And I probably mispronounced that, and I apologize, you know, in advance for that. <clears throat> but the interesting thing is when you take this concept and you actually apply it to the game world of Destiny, uh, this philosophy is most evident in the teachings of the Symmetry. Most of the teachings that we see refer to the balance between light and dark in in a way similar to the concept of reflectional symmetry uh, and also in a way of like military strength. But 
I would also be interested in seeing how just how far this teaching goes. We do see that the Vanguard views the teachings as dangerous, which is if we look into some of the social philosophies of symmetrical design, actually would make quite a bit of sense. <clears throat> Excuse me. Symmetrical interactions within social settings basically send the moral message, we are all the same. While asymmetrical interactions may send the message, I am special, I am better than you. So peer relationships, such as can be governed by the governed rule or the golden rule, are based on symmetry, where power relationships are based on asymmetry. Thus, in a social sense, symmetry would promote the concept that all within the city are equal, guardian and civilian. So not diving into the rabbit hole of potential political implications there, uh, you know, look at the consensus as a ruling body compared to a system in which all have a say. So you're basically comparing an oligarchy to a democracy, whether that is direct or representational. So let's just say that in a symmetrical society, assessments of reciprocity, empathy, sympathy, apology, dialogue, respect, justice, and revenge would be something that might look significantly different than how they are currently within the last city. This balance, referred to as reflective equilibrium, is achieved most commonly via a process of mutual adjustments in both general principles and particular judgments, something that, when applied to the concept of a social contract, creates a dangerous foundation upon those that try to base power on a, I don't know, a small body of group of people who are controlling the fate of the whole, the whole, which is basically the consensus. Um, this is also could be used as a potential explanation on Ulan Tan's being so unpopular uh, in most guardian circles, which we actually see mentioned in the bond of reciprocity. So you actually, you can often see here, you know, if this is actually true, if there's an actual, dive into the social concept of symmetry it's not just about light and dark then there could be more powerful implications especially against the speaker and the consensus because it's basically an argument for a representative democracy whereas right now in the city <clears throat> or prior to current day city we had a really strongly based oligarchy one of which those figures in that oligarchy was a very strong proponent for a monarchy which are both significantly different than the concept of reflective equilibrium i'm sorry i'm just no. waiting for you to bring up the new monarchy well and, and I, as... the only reason the only reason is as the pendulum swing like as as a pendulum or a gradient right you have an oligarchy which is ba so an oligarchy is basically ruled by a small body of people Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's, you know, it, it is the consensus. The consensus is a actually really good explanation of an oligarchy. The other problem with oligarchies is that rule is not representative of the vast majority. So there is no, like, uh, United States, we're a representative democracy. We vote via an electoral college and that electoral college, or we, we populate an electoral college. That electoral college is supposed to vote based off the, the general rule of the people they represent. And that then trickles up into selection based off the the majority or the democracy a true democracy right. would remove that middle piece and the true democracy yeah, yeah, is chaos um which just read history on greek direct democracy and it's just it's a nightmare um but whereas with an oligarchy we see this actually with the with actually the point where we also learn that the vanguard look at the symmetry as dangerous we see that this is the reason they choose the future war cult the the consensus as a body chooses the other people who are on the consensus. They do not refer to people who are not on the consensus. Therefore, they are basically self-contained within them. Whereas mm -hmm. a, a system that is based around something such as a reflective equilibrium would be much more akin to a democracy system. Now, there's there's valid criticisms to the concept of reflective equilibrium within a social sense. Uh, one of them is being that it is very much a thin veil over what's referred to as political relativism. Um, that's that's a you know like I said, not trying to get into that rabbit hole. But right. the the interesting thing for me here, the the kind of curious thing for me, is like this could be a possible explanation of why Ulan Tan was so unpopular and so kind of. Uh, pushed into the 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 sides as he was like there there is because you're telling basically if the symmetry is applying not just to the light and the dark but also to the politics of the city you're telling the guardians that they are not special they are just the same as the civilians uh which 
which is something that until Destiny 2 was not a very popular thought. We see that with the military law that um, that I just blanked. Um, clan. Uh, dots, dots on her face. Gosh, why did I blank on her name? Hawthorne? Hawthorne, thank you. Uh, we see with Hawthorne and her mentions of why she grew up with Devram and what she got in trouble with and her distaste for the new monarchy. Um, and you also hear this within the idle dialogue. Compare the idle dialogue of civilians from Destiny 1 to Destiny 2, and there's a lot more... Uh, it's a lot more nerve wracking to listen to the idle dialogue in Destiny One when it talks about the 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 presence of the factions. When you then look at dialogue from Destiny Two, so far, it's much more about you know rebuilding and, and focusing on like actual positive things. Whereas in Destiny One, it was kind of more about like oh, there's there's all this stuff going on, um, and you know new monarchy is coming down or dead orbits coming down, you know whatever. That's all going on still, but it's not as folk, it's not as prevalent okay. anymore. So with the introduction of Drifter and his personality, he is definitely somewhat of a chaotic character. Right. So are yeah. you viewing him as a <clears throat> as having this whole conscious effort of moving that direction of trying it doesn't, to bring quote unquote balance, or are you viewing him more as a chaotic aspect that so happens to kind of have fall into that using both the dark and light right yeah about the dark i think modes. i think like for me personally i think i view drifter as kind of like breaking the fourth wall a little bit i think he's kind of a, a chaotic element that is just the natural order of bringing balance to the game uh we see that a lot within the uh lo- the uh, the loyalty quest that we had during the season of the drifter with uh Anor and drifter you had on the one hand so like you know going back to this idea of law and chaos Law would be a Nor in the Praxic Order. Like, literally, they are the law keepers of the Guardian ranks. And then you had um, Drifter as the Chaos. And so, like, going back up here, you know, you, you refer to Law as itself being overly controlling. Well, right, because if a Nor is, you know, if the Praxic Order is given, you know, full reign, they're going to be dot, 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 dot. You know, they're, they're very regimented. They're very, you know, that's exactly how it is. This is the law. Uh, you see that with Anor's conflict with Shin, uh, when she confronts Shin and uh, she basically tells him to back off from the shadows that he's hunting, uh, mm-hmm. because because to her, they have not yet committed a crime. They are not yet to the point where they need to be killed. But then you also see Anor in the state where she will go after people uh, when they steal her ghost, but she doesn't kill them. She She arrests them. And, you know, and so it's, again, that very controlling piece. And then chaos is the drifter. You see drifter as chaos because he's like unmanageable. They, they don't really know where he's going. He's kind of like that, that semi feral beast that you kind of are like, oh, is he a nice dog or is he a wolf? Like, you don't really know what he's going to do. I mean, yeah, I mean, right. No, I mean, I mean, but, but my point is, is like, if you do a hundred percent drifter, you're going to be, you know, it's going to be chaos. It's going to, it's going to, everyone's out for themselves, which is what we talked about, you know, last episode, everyone's going to be out for themselves and all that. Didn't Anor level a city block trying to kill him? Not him. Uh, She, she basically, so basically what happened with that situation, um, they, there was a group of shadows. This is actually, yeah, this was the shadows that, um, this was actually where we learned a new tech too, which is really cool. Uh, There's a, there's a wet or a net that they can fire around ghosts that lock them down and immobilize the ghost. Uh, And so what they did was they actually kidnapped her ghost. Now, interestingly enough, we don't really know if Drifter was not the person who taught who tipped her off about where they were. Um, But she she took a uh, she took a tram and it's emphasized also that she she made sure there were no civilians on the train. There were no there was an it was an abandoned warehouse like there was no civilian casualties. Um, And yeah, thanks, Dino. Okay. Drifter was the one who tipped her off. Yeah. And I I mean, like, and I I explicitly want to bring up it wasn't she she used her uh, her position within the Praxic Order to clear the train off. And then she took control of the train and drove the train into an abandoned warehouse. So there was no like it was an abandoned area of the city. There was no civilian injuries. Um, The only collateral damage was basically the guardians who had, you know, kidnapped her ghost. And so, so real quick question before you go on with that teach which which side of the quest did you go on did you go choose drifter or did you choose a as far as the allegiance quest 
Well, the tale of Dredge and Kira wouldn't be much of a tale if I picked the <laughs> Vanguard. Right, but I, you know, I mean, you never know. Okay, so here's the thing I want to bring up. Really. It's like, people, yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, the <laughs> perspective that the people who chose Drifter, because I chose Drifter as well, mm-hmm. get the impression essentially that Anor did level a city block, and you don't get the rest of the story. You only get a part of the story. You get the side that he tells you. Right. Yes, I, I know Blue. No, no, no. I'm um, sorry. I was sending that for Teach. Uh, oh, okay. It's, is, it's this, di- is this the other side yeah, of the coin? Yeah, yeah. So this is so this is the entry. Okay. If you go to Ishtar, search uh, District One Twenty Five, yep. or just look up the book Warlock and Nor. Um, because sure. if you chose if you chose Vanguard, you actually got the full book. Uh, if you chose Drifter, you only got, I believe, the. You only uh, get about the first like four or five. The, okay, is it really that? Okay, I didn't know it was that little. But uh, yeah, not much. I do yeah. think it's interesting that, and from a from, and this is again this punch the hole in the fourth wall. But I, I I do feel like that this this was designed to Bungie had to know that eighty percent of players were going to pick the Drifter. Oh yeah, so yeah. they locked the lore book and the <laughs> weekly free enhancement core uh, <laughs> behind the Vanguard quest, and and even I tell you what, I stayed loyal, unlike these. <laughs> I was still Drifter. I denied my free enhancement core when I needed them the most. And I didn't take it. Well, screw you, Anor. Signed, Dredge and Kira. Kisses. 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 Winky face. Oh, yeah. <coughs> but yeah, no, she... So this is where we kind of uh, found... Let me see. Uh, You're restraining forgiven, band. I know. This time. I need sense. I needed armor. <laughs> Uh, so this is where we actually learned about the restraining band, uh, which was a really cool. Like that was like a, I had to read that a couple times because I was like, wait, 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 what? Like <laughs> you can de, you can de- okay. you can so, basically kidnap ready? ghost exotic grenade launcher in PvP. Mm-hmm. If you mm-hmm. kill somebody with it, their respawn timer is longer. Oh. Or or the the explanation of elimination. Well, but I mean, like, imagine it being a quick play. Like, six feet actually six. being a mechanic oh, that we yeah, see yeah, yeah. in game. You kill somebody with this grenade launcher that's like the ghost net or whatever, and instead of three seconds, your spawn timer's like ten seconds. That would be <laughs> awesome. Or if you, or if it's in like an elimination thing where you can, not necessarily elimination, like survival or not, gosh, countdown, there we go, the one that you can actually revive people on now. Right, 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 right. You have to waste two tokens. You have to waste two tokens to pick them up. So if you really want them back, two people have to pick them up. Green, do you still have my Titan armor thing pulled up? I do. Go look at Crest of Alpha Loopy. Okay. (laughs) Blue, go on. I'll catch up. No, no, no. I was just going to say, like, so Drifter would be definitely, like, that's that's a really good example, too, right? Is Anor is the the law and Drifter is the, Mm -hmm. the chaos. And so if you look at a balance between the two, you kind of see that within the Guardians who are playing, you know, who who are playing both sides but aren't overly dedicated to one or the other. And and that's also, interestingly enough, that's also where you see Shin um, come in, right? It's like Shin kind of points out that we've always chosen our own path. It's never been, no matter who we deal with, we always choose the path that is ours. We don't choose a path that is... Um, that is, you know, the drifter's path. It's not we're not choosing the vanguard's path. We're making it our path. We we give and take what we need from both sides. Um, now, in our, in another like really kind of cool thing about like the concept of symmetry. If you look up like uh, uh, geometrical symmetry and stuff like that, symmetry is not just a simple matter of balance between two points. Like <clears throat> it's not just a bi binary system. Uh, you have quite a few different, actually. Uh, if you've ever seen the icon of the, uh, I think it's the Triskelion, um, that is actually a form. Hang on, let me make sure I am saying this correctly. Uh, I believe it's a, re- it's not a reflectionary, it's a rotational symmetry. Uh, and so, like, you have different concepts within the, within, like, physics and, you know, biology and in just general mathematics, uh, where you have like you have like reflectional symmetry, rotational symmetry, translational symmetry, helical symmetry, scale symmetry, uh, glide reflection symmetry. I mean, there's there's all sorts of things, and each one of them has a slightly different thing. But the the main point is that it doesn't it doesn't transform it into something that changes the overall shape. So basically, if an object is symmetrical, 
there is a transformation that can move individual pieces of the object, but it won't change the overall shape. Um, and so then obviously as you dive in, there's, there's different ways of that transformation working. Uh, one of the things is if you ever look through a, um, I can't ever remember what they're called, but the, the tubes with the marble at the end of it that you can rotate and it has all the fractals at the bot at the end of them. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. What are they called? Um, kaleidoscope kaleidoscope mm-hmm. thank you if you ever look through that that's that's the concept of a of a symmetrical thing in the form of like the overall shape of the kaleidoscope so like usually it's like a i think it's like a pentagram or pentagon um pentagram oh that'd be an interesting one a pentagon um <laughs> yeah yeah just tangent on that one um listen kids anyways <laughs> anyways um blair witch it, project did come yeah, out today, so. yeah oh Topical. um there you go. But if you look at the overall shape, the overall shape doesn't change, but the, the images within it do. Uh, that's kind of like a reflectional symmetry, rotational or self similarity. So, you know, there's there's and there each of those are um, obtained via specific rules within that mat, that that particular shape. So those are usually referred to as finite sub- subdivision rules. Um, and that's probably about the limit of my geometry knowledge, because math and me don't usually get along very well Um, so relating it back to the concept of symmetry between the balance of light and dark and mm, chaos basically the basic thing is is like again the definition of if something is symmetrical is that transformation of individual pieces is possible within the object but it doesn't change the overall shape so within the concept of light and dark, you can change the, you can transform the individual definitions or the individual um, so there uh, will always components be within an opposite reaction that happens to the initial change. Right. And it, and in some cases it doesn't even have to necessarily be an equal. It just has to be something that, you know, within a binary system, it's going to be an equal because there's only two parts, right? Um, right. But within like a three-part or a four-part system, there can be more, you know, as long as the overall shape doesn't get affected, it can be symmetrical. Um, so, Meaning there's uh, a third player on the field. There could be a third queen, if you will, given, you know, some other references there. Uh, you okay, know, so, so here's... In line with this, this balance, this idea of balance, right, and and the and the light and the dark and, and the idea of symmetry. Um, two things. First of all, and this is nothing to do with gambit, which sorry, uh, but you have the traveler representative of light that is a sphere, and then you have these tetrahedron, um, you know, ships that are, we think represent dark. Which of course, there's something symmetrical about those, which is completely interesting. However. On the flip side of that coin, I've been reading interesting theories that despite the fact that the ships appear to power on and start to move uh, at the Traveler's reawakening, I have heard theories and mumblings that folks seem to believe that there's the potential for Gaul's constriction of the Traveler's Light being the actual catalyst for awakening the ships because there was at that point a loss of symmetry in that light had ceased to exist form destiny and dark what remained therefore uh bringing the ships as close as they are now to our system and then that the uh the pulse of light at the end of the campaign being the kind of like pinpoint location radar ping if you will that shows where they actually are on the other on the other hand what i would think also is that the tethering of the traveler was what shut them off and then when he was what shut them off interesting okay because if they are powered on with the presence of light uh sure then when we see at the end because what we see at the end is that that wave of light over washing over them and then they you know they power back on or power on you know whatever but like so it, it was the tethering didn't activate them because they were deactivated until it was untethered right so what I would actually say would be a more interesting for me at least for more a more uh, intriguing idea is that they were always on because the traveler was always kind of or that could be why the traveler wasn't pulsating light out. Um, but as soon as the traveler reactivated that particular field, that's what reactivated sure. them as well. Okay, I like that too, and I think that that's interesting because technically that would mean that if we really want the darkness to go away, we have to give up our light. Which right, is which one of the theories. Yeah. Uh, with symmetry. Who was it? Right. Ulantan was it actually. Ulantan? So, yeah. yeah. He asked the question. I think it was I think it was Ulantan that basically he asked the question of like what would you give up 
Like, would you be willing to give up your, hang on, I'll, I'll hunt it down. While you look that up, it's interesting that you bring this up because the concept of this depends on what scale that you or your guardian thinks about. Because to me, you, you know, I think the, I think the the obvious debated answer is that you know, well, yeah, like uh, you'd be willing to give it up because then you just kind of have normal life without light or dark evil right. stuff. But right. then, like at the same time, could the guardian light as it exists now? prevent something like a second collapse well here's the thing to remember that everything is works in gradients right so we had the mention of Eris saying with the brighter light shines there's a darker shadow shadow and it may not have been Eris. i don't remember who it was exactly off the top of my head now that i'm saying that but when something shines brightly something you got you're gonna get a deeper looking shadow to come sure. match it so you're gonna have when we have more light available, have more <laughs> brightness going on, there's going to be an, the huge swing to have something huge in the dark area, quote unquote, to come in and match with it. It was Mara. Thank you, Dino. Yeah. And so, the, I mean, the that quote, makes me think of like overcast days. Right. Yeah. Uh, the quote about what you're talking about for the light and dark, that would be the Symmetry Flight uh, exotic ship, which, ah, looks, gotcha. which looks really like Fermi's paradox. Anyways, um, it's basically, therefore, the quote is, therefore, I conclude, the reason you persecute me is not because of the symmetry, it's because of the truth beyond this truth, the truth which you most dread. If we could destroy the darkness, but we had to give up our light to do so, how many of us would make that trade? Mm. Worded like that, it's a lot more... Devastating? Open-ended. Yeah, devastating, yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, well, okay, here's here's the deal, is, is uh, <clears throat> this begs the question of, Technically, Guardians lost their light, right, in mm-hmm. the Red War. That, that lost. I mean, that, that was an explicit term used by Bungie and by Gaul, and the, the light was gone, absent, did not exist, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which technically means that maybe you could see the silver lining of this, saying, if we were to make that trade, okay, light goes away. Yes, it's the source of our power. Yes, it's our ghosts and our or maybe our companions. But we have proof existing in game that shows that at that point even in the absence of light you would then still be able to live out a lifetime correct well the absence of the travelers we know that with eris as well she cannot use her ghost her final i mean technically she's still a guardian but she cannot function the same way right so uh, but it also depends i mean it's not like you're condemning all guardians to death should you decide that giving up well but see that's where it gets kind of dicey because light if light is the energy of everything living so like again yeah because again look at look at it this way if you look at the thorn series you see dredge and your reference that everything has light like he's talking sure. to the the bandits, the bandit bandit situation where he's like, "Oh, you have light. It's just a sliver, but it's you know, it's it's enough for right now." Like, and and the the general like, we don't know for certain if that's a guardian or not. It seems like it's not. I'd argue pretty heavily that it doesn't. It's not a guardian. But if it's not a guardian, if that is a regular person, that is a nod to the fact that everything has this, and I kind of refer to it as anima, this kind of life force. It would also explain why the hive crave it so much and so in such a vampiric fashion is because they are literally siphoning the life energy from other creatures to sustain themselves. Like a, a But vampire. to have it doesn't necessarily mean it's linked to life. For example, midichlorians oh. are exist in all oh, things and everything oh and technically God. are the source of a power but oh. the absence of them does not equal death <laughs> oh, <laughs> I guess it, listen you I guess it just it just goes into whether or not you believe that the light is a source of anima or not well and we've like, we left also... the gambit behind for the evening I suppose. Yeah, yeah listen <laughs> listen we're gonna go back to destiny hoth and um <laughs> We're going to hash this out over a game of whatever those cards the Drifter had were. I call not sleeping in the Tauntaun this evening. Uh, Okay. Dear Bungie Merch Store, please sell the card game. I don't even care if it comes with rules. I just want the cards. We have the cards. That was one of the things you got as a promo. No, no. The The card, the the Uno The card game. The the drifter little domino yeah like the, the pips. what do you see playing ones with the, the ships yeah he's playing gotcha, with the gotcha, gotcha. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's give like me Sabacc. those I don't need it's to know like how to Sabacc. play I'll make it up you watch me do it, <laughs> you watch I, it up. I'll will... make it up as I go <laughs> there we go 
best way to do it. Just the best way to do it is just get a six year old to come in the room with you and say, I need to make a game up. They will That's have right. it done within 30 seconds. It'll be a situation where I pull the one with the slightly larger dot and automatically win. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, you know, again, you know, the, the argument too, like Pradith also mentions that, you know, the light is everywhere. The light is in everything. Um, yeah, and so, sure. like, I guess, I guess the the question really there is like, okay, so even within the symmetry flight entry, you see the kind of concept of this purest paracausal form. Like, you know, is it something? Like, is is it even something that you can destroy? Like, and that's where you know, again, when you first read about the symmetry, that's kind of where I was seeing originally the danger is like you're telling an army that has been told the darkness is our enemy, that the enemy is not able to be defeated. And you, that's not something you tell an army. You don't tell the army, oh, hey, the people you're fighting, they're not going to be able to be defeated. Like, that's just the way things are. Because you want I mean, them to I keep to, fighting. I hate to keep bringing up Star Wars, but I think that this is this is very similar to the idea of the Sith Jedi. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Luke's philosophy in, in, in Last Jedi being that if, if the Jedi continue to exist, the Sith can exist. Mm-hmm. If the Jedi do not exist, there are no Sith. So I think it's, you know, it... it you know, I don't, I don't know if it even matters if you can destroy light and destiny because technically the the presence that we're, we're referring to two different things in my mind that 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 that, that if, if you're talking about, you know, you know, Mara says the brighter the light casts a darker shadow. And of course, that's a metaphor. But right. what's the is is that is is the metaphor for that, that the more powerful we guardians become with the light, the more uh, sources and power and, and, and threats of darkness grow in their power alongside us. Because honestly, like the, the, the real example of light and shadows, if, if the light exists within, then it's not referring to the illuminescent light that would create shadows. It's a, it's, it's metaphorically talking about the power and how that would rise up dark entities in the same way that light ones can, t- I, you know, I don't know. I'm, I mean, that, I'm, I'm, that's- and that's actually been a theory I've had brought up to me a few different times that light and dark are actually essentially very much so the same thing. They're just mm-hmm. displaying it in two different ways. Well, isn't that the drifter's whole philosophy on everything? I mean, Pretty, that, I mean, which is why he chooses to wield dark and and pos- I mean, I, I, you guys, you guys have seen the ornaments for the gambit set or gambit weapons. Yes, that they are literally tubes of taken mm-hmm. energy mounted yep. oh, on yeah. the guns. Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, like in all of them, every single one has that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and to me at that, and that's actually some of the lore I'm writing about right now for my guardian, which is, you know, what is the effect of a guardian of constantly being in a close proximity to a canister of dark energy? Like, you know, our light exists all around us and in our cells. And then we, we, you know, channel it to, to create big powers and all these different things. But at the same time, I, I imagine that it cannot be good for me to be walking around with a sniper slung over my back that's six feet of, you know, the T virus, you know, at, a, at any given point. Like, that, <laughs> you know, it seems like this is a mistake. And yet, here we are. Right. Is my light becoming weaker as a result of the exposure to the dark? Is the sniper becoming stronger as a result of being exposed to my guardian's light? I don't know. I mean, that's the, the big debate on it is whether or not it really does taint you or cover up any of those aspects or Which, if okay. it's even a covering up. Let's talk about Joxer for a second. Yeah. Okay. It. So so if it, Joxer has, I mean, in my mind, trauma over witnessing a a, a guardian permanent, right? He mm-hmm. he's, he's messed up about it. He can't. Right. You know, he can't even process it much like, you know, he, he starts to say he loses his mind. He almost doesn't want the drifter's money. He can't believe what he's seen. He he didn't think it was possible. This is dangerous. Why are we doing this? Uh, and yet at the same time, what they don't explicitly outline in that lore entry, what was the cause of the permadeath? Because to me, I don't see a guardian, you know, pulling a, a, a marksman baron and, and sniping a a, a guardian's ghost with the, you know, a soul survivor sniper rifle. I just, I don't right. see that being like the thing that happened, but is it, it was, it was, it did the guardian die because they carried too many moats. And that's why we have a pocket cap on our moats and the drifters imbued the collector prime set with a special magic that lets you go just a tiny bit further without being overly corrupted. Did it happen because 
um, the dark energy that surrounds and embodies an invader causes their weapons to deal the damage equivalent to dark power and dark energy and, you know, and all these different things. I don't, well, I, I guess a whole nother, like how does PVP work in that respect then? I mean, right. we're not permadeathing, but so, so you're talking about <clears throat> the reckoning, uh, well, I'm, no, I'm talking about I'm talking about in game. Well, right, right, right. The, the record, the record, the reckoning. So he right. says he says that the ghost got sloppy. You give the taken a chance the, and they'll snuff is, out your what, light. Which I mean, the taken a chance and they'll snuff out the light. However, yeah. do you see what an invader looks like when they come through an ascendant portal to get to the other side? What kind of taken are we talking about? And, that, and I mean, like, that's fair. But I mean, what I'm saying is like because he goes on, he says the fact that you're alive means your ghost knows what he's doing. Which tells me that the ghost did what Sundance did, came out when it shouldn't have, and got murked. Like, and it doesn't, like... By this a is something... taken? Oh, yeah. I mean, a ghost can get destroyed by a mundane bullet. That's not, okay, that's so, nothing. So... That's not anything new. I mean, if you look at the Iron Lord, or the Iron Lords, there were specific rules against taking out ghosts for that exact purpose. That's the entire scene within... Uh, the man with no name, where Ephrodite challenges um, the three warlords who are in Wu Ming's bar. He, she doesn't challenge the guardians. She tells the ghosts to leave because she's going to shoot them if they don't. Sure, like, and, and I then, get so, that. And 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 she didn't have a paracausal weapon. I mean, that's that's not no, that's not, not. She and so whatever it was. and uh, and then also within reference, there is also I believe it's the pay rune. No, it's not the pay rune. It's the Yolder card. Where uh, Perun mentions to Yolder to watch out because uh, the guard, the warlord that she's going up against, could get crafty and take and target her ghost. So, like, there, there's again, there's a thing where it's like if the ghost isn't paying attention, yeah, the ghost is going to get taken out. So, is the mechanic in the game where, and this is again fourth wall, <laughs> punch right through it. But is the is the mechanic in the game where I'm sitting dead in Gambit in front of the primeval and it's unloading? damage onto my ghost is that just Bungie taking a little bit of liberty for the sake of a game mechanic because it would seem probably, to me at that point that yeah, my I ghost would say, be dead right i would i would argue that yeah you're probably that's probably just a, a a ui thing for us as players to see where the ghost because is if and you make the uh, res. if you read the the porsche the entry about resil in the um, the valley where he goes up against the captain and gets himself killed and then has his ghost fly in, sneak in, and resurrect him. His ghost wasn't actually even with him. His ghost was waiting behind, waited for him to die, and then snuck in like under under the radar, basically, and resurrected him right in the face of the captain. Like, there, there was an actual strategy to that whole thing. Okay. So the, okay, so the, so okay, so this is so then we'll we'll say that that's a that's a liberty for the sake of gaming. I, I want to say that I I personally actually think that's exposing m- a ghost. Yeah, I think that that okay. would be. I mean, not to say that Dinklebot or whatever you refer to Nolan Droid would do it because you know he's he has some special moments, but you know, like I I don't know, like I I personally have always kind of taken that as that that's just a an indicator to where you are. To each, because also, I mean, there's no other way for it to mark. Like they don't have a UI thing um, that would mark your presence, especially in like PVE, where your your teammates will need to resurrect you, or they can help resurrect you quicker. Um, that's just, I think, the easiest thing for them. You know, honestly. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> chat. Chat. Chat is in agreement. My ghost is not that yes, dumb. Not that dumb. <laughs> sure. <laughs> To just stand there separating all its parts and spinning in a cute little circle? No, I guess not. Um, okay, so with that, with, okay, then let's knowing that and and how susceptible ghosts actually are uh, to being killed by guardians or otherwise, which I think is well, because I mean, clearly... you also you also see it with the cabal. Uh, one of the early cards, one of the really funny cards from the cabal about the gu- the guardians dancing. They refer to sure. one of the only ways to take out guardians is to target their dead people, the their ghosts, because mm-hmm. they don't have a word for ghosts. Ghost, sure but they, they actually okay. refer to it. They're like, if you can target this, target this little thing, because that thing that thing keeps resurrecting them. And if you take out that, that doesn't mean. And then you can take out the the other thing. And you know, to them, it was very very straightforward. You take out the little thing, and then you can take out the big thing, and the big thing doesn't keep coming back and dancing on you. Okay. 
So, so we're going to assume that in the case of the, the guardian that jocks are witnessed be killed forever, uh, based on the ghost getting sloppy quote, it died in, in the presence of a taken. The ghost came out in an attempt to revive the guardian and a taken enemy bot or a blocker rather, uh, killed the ghost before that could happen. Is that the, the common? That's, that's kind of how I assumption? take it. Yeah, because okay. like, because he says like later into this, because um, this is where Jocker's like, you could have helped them, you could have stopped those taken, you could have saved them all, um, right? And that's where he was kind of like, <clears throat> he was, he's basically this was like the beta test for uh, Gambit Prime because he was, he mentions right. you know the 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 armor, blah blah blah. Um, I invaded, yeah, because he said I invaded the other side. The armor locked the bank down. I took the moats right out of it like they were mine. We wiped them out. And right. and then he's like, you're giving everyone a set of these, <clears throat> and he's like, and that's when Drifter's kind of like, eh, <laughs> like you're. We are kind of forgetting one other type that can perma death, the one other gun that can actually do that. Now, granted, the ties to Drifter aren't necessarily in mm, the same mm-hmm, card mm-hmm. that you guys are talking about, but it's the Thorn. Thorn has been known to perma death guardians. Guardians, yeah. I mean, which is was the case for I mean many of Dredge and yours guardian victims right so i mean okay but maybe we can tie it back to the drifter what about mouth malfeasance it shoots taken it doesn't shoot the same as thorn it's but if it's i mean sure it's still dark power dark energy created by the hive and taking it we don't have an instance of it happening but do we you don't have an instance of what that malfeasance permadeath something no, but I mean, like Dino, Dino has this quote too, and this is kind of what I was talking about. There's a quote. I think this is from a Nor. Um, I think no, no, maybe not. I Dino might need to tell me where this one's coming from, but it's a quote that says these those guardians knew the risk. We take them every time we raid the outer edges or run a strike. Gambit's the same. Those were not thor- thanks, Shacks. Uh, those were not thorn incidents. In each case, non guardian hostiles caught ghost unprepared. The crucibles for them as much as for us. Well, okay, but then Black Flag says what I was thinking, which was that Drifter did have us forge malfeasance in because it would be able to take down Shin Malfur. He come after Drifter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that was the wasn't that the entire point of malfeasance was to take out uh, Shin to try to. Uh, yeah, it was revenge his answer for, to Thorn. Well, wasn't it also his, kind of like revenge for Callum? Revenge for Callum, but also, I mean, well, Drifter didn't have any lost love for Callum. Yeah, well, but it wasn't was, Dr- well, Drifter was the one that sent. The only reason is that I'm 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 stuck on that particular annoyance of malfeasance, um, and so I, I know that's when because uh, he says, "What was it? Uh, we can't outshoot him. Maybe he can't be outshot. But if we all take our shot together, we don't have to beat him to it. He'll die too." Yeah, yeah, Shin has no ghost for sure, for sure. Yeah, maybe, and yeah, I guess Drifter seems to think though that in the presence of a, I mean, I don't know if is he technically a guardian, a, a light bearer, we'll call him. Uh, you know, in the presence of a light bearer, Drifter seems to think that Malfeasance has enough dark energy to ensure a good kill, and that it couldn't be defended against by using the power of the light. We do survive Thorn as well. We do. But I mean, technically, we survive replicas of Thorn because the mm-hmm. real one is Lamina. But we all also have that. I don't really, they take a little too many liberties with it, the concept of whether or not we have the gun these days. But yeah, because yeah, Lumina technically, was an interesting yeah, class. Lumina, Lumina basically confirmed that we have, we had the original, the original Thorn. Yeah. And then we transformed it into Lumina. So into, the original yes. Thorn doesn't exist anymore. The original Lost Word does exist, and we have both of them. We have the, technically we're supposed to have the original Last Word as well. Is yes, that... we summoned it in the quest that was part with of the Proto Hive. Mm-hmm. With the with, with the really fun uh, shooting mechanic that glitched out. But Shin's not dead. What does he have? Then? Shin doesn't have it. He doesn't have the Last Word anymore. He doesn't have One the of... original Last Word anymore. Well, one of the explanations that was given in that is that we, you said it, we summon it. So Shin may be able to summon the last word as well. Okay. Yeah. There's, there's a weird nuance on what exactly the last word is. Is. Right. I mean, uh, wouldn't it be something <laughs> if, if we find out the last word is a weapon of sorrow <laughs> forged, forged from ready, lady. Forge from 
Shin's completely deranged mentality of adopting the mantle of Dredge and Vale and, you know, playing both sides, basically. You know, that he he himself, through uh, through that lack of nobility, corrupted his own weapon and turned it into a weapon of sorrow. I I'm mean, sm- I'm smiling because this is a very <laughs> similar theory to somebody else I know. Um, really? Okay. Okay. As well as an RP that he runs because he actually, he runs a Shin RP. And this is one of the venues that he's taken a little bit of liberties of and kind of played with that idea of that thorn and, or not thorn, but uh, the last word is not necessarily a weapon of sorrow, but a weapon of light, a specific kind of type thing. So it kind of dives into that same concept of what we were talking about with the symmetry earlier, the, there being the the chaotic effect and the, the law effect. And what is the law gun of the West, but a like a six shooter that's just that speed shooter. So you sure. kind of get that symmetry there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Blue. Did we thoroughly derail this advanced topic for you? No, I'm arguing about something well i'm not really arguing we're having a conversation in chat about something oh um, i'm getting corrected wicked said no he did say it was a weapon of sorrow i still th- i like my idea that it's a weapon of light let's have okay. balance all the way through so okay but technically if dredgen yor was corrupted by zion and his exposure to hive which of mm-hmm. course are the originators of the idea the concept of weapons of sorrow and you know the sword logic and all these things life for life uh wouldn't that mean that last word wouldn't have a choice but to be a weapon of sorrow if it was anything other than a bullet firing hand cannon i mean it could be a gray weapon if we're gonna go and do sure. one of the the sure. gray jedi or the let's go back to star wars because everything goes back to star wars in this episode right. I mean, the yep. concept of the theory, Grey Jedi, having the, the balance right. is Shin. I mean, balance. that's what he's working towards. I think and Malf fits in that category, too. Malfeasance? It's just... I would well, it? because what, what we're saying about Last Word is that Last Word factors in the motivation and the reality. The motivation being Shin's corruption and, and leading the Shadows of Yore to their own demise. And... The idea that it was originally a, 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 a call it a good guy gun, because that's the most basic way to say it, based on um, uh, what's his face? Daddy, Daddy Shin. Um, Daddy Shin, your Dredgen, nope. your Rizzle is your. Nope. Jaren. Raz- nope. Oh, Jaren Ward. Jaren Ward. Thank you. Uh, Let's go through the whole list. So, the, the, so, so then we're, we're talking about a gun's physical manifestation based on motivation and reality. Therefore, the motivation of the reality of malfeasance is that it's a taken gun, mm-hmm. and the motivation of malfeasance is the preservation of life. So, could technically be a gray Jedi gun. I, maybe. Sorry, I'm getting a real big no. nerd boner talking no. about all this stuff, and it's. Uh, I, I'm. In, I mean, this is what we do. I love it. This is, <laughs> this is Friday night. This has been kind of a deeper dive than we've gotten in a, in a while, but I'm. I'm enjoying it. Blue, Good. do you have kind of a rebuttal for this kind of thing? Like, not necessarily rebuttal, but do you have something to add? No. I'm still arguing, <laughs> I'm, I'm still arguing no. in chat. Okay. What are you, okay, so what are you arguing in chat for the people at home who For people playing at the that. home game? Um, we're, we're debating whether or not Shin is on his last life. Oh. Oh, boy. That, it, I mean, there's, that's to a, be that's fair, a, that's so... A, it's, it's a it's, podcast for Shin. Right. Yeah. It, it's it's a it's a debatable topic, right? Because in Confessions of Hope Part Two, the ghost who resurrected the baby Shin, or who is believed to be baby Shin, which I mean it's pretty much baby Shin, um, you know, he, he calls out that if he falls, Shin will only or the, the child will only have the one this last second life to live. Now mm-hmm. right. the thing that I would I would combat with that is okay, yes, it is that is stated in that entry as such. However, it's been it's been stated in the perspective of a character in game. Um, so there there is a potential for there's just the potential for that to not be the case. There could be a situation, and we know that Jaren's ghost kind of adopted Shin following Jaren's death. Now, what I'm what my argument is is like we just don't know 
we know that it seems like a ghost can only true resurrect once. That seems to definitely be the case. They can only, you know, that initial spark of resurrection takes a lot out of the ghost and they have to find the one, right? So there's, there's just the one ghost. Yeah. To go from bones to a full breathing guardian. Right. But But do we have examples of like our ghost healing, like Eris of Eris got hurt? We have our is we have examples no. of our ghost trying to heal Cade and being called and been telling out the reason that he can't is because of the paracausal damage done to Sundance and Cade himself. Like okay. we Wait, have, does we that have, happen? Yeah, it's in, in the, the cutscene. Cut he says he can't. He's like call. he's beyond my help. I can't help him. Like we oh, have, we have. I always. Just, oh, okay. I didn't. But, I didn't we also transit. have. Well, we also have but, instances throughout blue. PVE. No, Whoa. hang on, hang on, time, time out, hang time on, out. hang on. I'm not done. We also have instances of our ghosts, our guardian, helping resurrect other guardians throughout the game. You do it every day. Yeah, but you just trigger that ghost to have enough light. This, that do was you? The, that was, that was That's the how I interpret it. Yeah. So the no, other I mean, thing is, but my question is, is, par- is like... Whoa, I want to go back to paracausal killing of Cade. Cade's yeah. ghost got sniped out of the air by... Um, the Rifleman. The Special Rifleman, right. right. So, so that happened. So... A, he cannot come back. And then he's killed like a normal human being, just like we could get killed by normal bullets from the Ace of Spades. He's right. not paracausally killed. Shit, he's killed Sundance the was. Mechanics. Sundance no. was. Sundance was. It was a paracausal bullet. That was the entire thing that threw everyone from With loop. Hangman? Or not with Hangman, with Rifleman? Yeah. Yeah. That because was the whole thing. It was the it was Kay. the bullet. Of, it was basically the sorrow so that's bullet. That's the main ex- because that's because the main they right. don't have okay. because again, if you look at it like a conduit, right? If you don't have the ghost to channel the light through, you can't resurrect them. But okay, uh, here's, cool. Here's my here's my question going on with that. So since that part is cleared up, without the ghost, right? Being and able that's to, and that's where ha- having that. That's right. where the debate lies. That's where that is where the debate lies. Right? No, that's what I'm saying. Is I am just saying. Currently, we don't have anything in game that is speaking black and white that it's not not one hundred percent possible that Shin is on his last death. We have Shin paired with a ghost. I'm just saying there is a slight possibility that that is what's happening. Okay, so then I always assume, and this is obviously we're having a super discussion, but I always assume that like when a ghost did the whole spark and got you your first initial res. Like that was like that was like pairing Bluetooth to your phone. Like now you guys are linked and and and, you know, one at a time, my energy funds this guardian's life force. And in the event that we have to partner up for another one, it's me working with the other ghost to kind of be like, hey, knock, knock, housekeeping, get your buddy up right now. And and like not that that not that my ghost or me was actually resurrecting a fire team. Blue. Sorry. Hang on. OK, so. So if if so if the, if it's not that if it's if it's actually that you know ghosts can technically resurrect anybody the heck they want as long as they're a guardian that would also mean again that there's just I mean there's that would also say that there's not one ghost to one guardian because you right. have ghost searching all of the system to for find one it. guardian but really it doesn't matter at the end of the day like well, I, for that's... one that matches their thing right right so that's the whole right thing. they're on the same they're on the same spectrum or the same wavelength of light if you will no pun intended there and, uh, just... and and here's here's here to clear it up because i think i'm i'm also i might be poking chat in the eye with a sharp stick because it's fun um to also clear it up i'm not saying that I, i'm just i'm just simply stating exactly. that you can read it in i i have read i can read it in both ways i can i can read it and say shin is just that that big of a bamf that he has not gotten shot now, timeline wise, there's a, also a big debate because if Shin is on his last life and he's mortal and he ages like everyone else, how the how in the nine hells is he still alive? OK, well, hold on. Hold on. We, he's clearly not mortal. If he if he, even but he if he's ages, not a guardian, but he ages, if he was a child when he was first resurrected. Now, yeah, granted, age, we, Jedi's age, but they're not going to die of old age uh, unless you're Yoda who chooses to die of old age. <laughs> well, I mean, like you have you have. Um, you know, you because have the concept if, of the the human life has tripled, so there, there is that kind of to fall back on to too. Human life tripled, but he's also a light bearer. He has, he has, he can, he's, he is the he man with heal. the golden gun. Yeah, Technically, like he, we could heal during the Red War. We just couldn't resurrect. Mm-hmm. Right. If you die, I can't save you. That was the whole 
By the way, I know Destiny's like the easiest game in the world. It's like Halo on easy minus. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry if I didn't, I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I agree with it, but I didn't say okay. it. Okay. <laughs> did anybody? Did anybody? And I actually tried this in my third Guardian curious chat. Did anybody actually? accidentally die in that part and wonder if you were just like if the game was just going to uninstall itself (laughs) (laughs) jump jumped off jumped off the run one thing (laughs) and i genuinely thought for a moment like okay how serious are they gonna take this because what if i actually die here is my guardian gone forever and i actually this is how messed up i am i actually thought for a second i want that to be true because i really wanted to i wanted to see reddit explode with everyone's like my guardian was deleted i had to start the whole game over back from d1 it's an easy way to get rid of easy way to get rid of that uh titan and warlock that are in the back pocket Mm -hmm. Taylor Swift and a new male exo that I didn't have until after my wife denied me. And a new male exo. Yep. (laughs) He's not even named. That's how big it is. No, he's not. He actually doesn't have a name. We've got Kira, we've got Tay-Tay, and we've got, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Crayon-eating Titan. Titan I play when I'm done with the other two. Yep. Oh, God. Bad teach killing guardians for science. Such a (laughs) toad. Yes, I was. I was. What happened? Okay. So, all right. Hold on. I have another question, and I'm gonna I'm gonna come full circle here. Is the concept of Gambit worse for the system than it would be if it was gone completely and the light was allowed to continue to flourish without Guardian's exposure to darkness at all? Is it good for the system, like our our universe, as far as the balance between light and dark, or is it good for the system in so much that uh, we wouldn't have the playing with things that aren't sh- should not be played with, quote unquote. If if you were playing with the darker, exp- well, I, I think it's your first one because if okay. if we go with if we go with Blue's theory mm-hmm. that the the tethering of the traveler is what stopped the tetrahedron ships, okay, right? Then technically that would mean that the act of participating in Gambit in exposing our Guardian's light to darkness on a regular basis Mm -hmm. would slow down the uh, efficiency of the Tetris. Mm -hmm. That would be... Though I don't don't know if that would be the conscious... I don't know if that would be a conscious effect. Of course not. Of course not. But what I'm saying is like if we're if we're really discussing the dangers of Gambit, right? That like right. the Proxic Fire, uh the Vanguard, they they they've quote they they said what was it that that Icora said in the we've allowed Gambit mm-hmm. to exist with close monitoring, right? Like it's like we're making sure it's not going to be dangerous and and we're, you know, and all these different things. And and at the same time, you have Drifter who's kind of like, "Yeah, but haven't you ever wondered why they don't want you to touch dark stuff?" And and you're kind of like, yeah, actually, I kind of have wondered that a little bit. And <laughs> and um, <laughs> boy, I Uncle like Drifter, you're needs- really cool. We need a sock puppet for this. <laughs> and we do. Okay, here's what I imagine: Drifter is like your really tattooed uncle that shows up because he plays in like a, a really bad ACDC cover band every right. Thanksgiving and Christmas, right. and he brings you like band T-shirts and candy, and you're like, everything you say is great. And he's like, I know. And then uh, like that, and then you go back to your parents, and you're like, you know. I- I got. I just got my first pack of cigarettes, and you're like, "Well, who'd you get this from?" It, Uncle Drifter. <laughs> Uncle Drifter. And they they stop down the hall, and they go, "You stop giving my kids these bad things." And and I'm gonna. What are you talking about? I just wanted to have exposure to the world, see the see the stuff, and do the things. And 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 the oh no no no, we're gonna keep our eye on you, good sir. You're not coming to Thanksgiving next year. I like Uncle Drifter. You're rude, Mom and Dad. I hate you. I'm going Uncle Drifter's side. Da, 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 da. And here go, and, and, and and then you get the allegiance quest. <laughs> and that, we end the show right there. <laughs> that and oh then we get the God, allegiance no. quest cut. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, um, no, I mean, you just summed up the relationship between the Vanguard and the Drifter so well. Is blue the parent and green the kid? Oh, God. <laughs> and I'm the Drifter. There it is. Yes. You oh, figured God. us out. We have to take one of those really horrible, like, 80s family photos. You know, with, like... With like the I'm, Aaron. I'll just be in the back smoking a cigarette wearing a mullet. <laughs> I've got a wife beater on. I'm covered in tattoos. 
You guys are in like really beautiful cardigans. Flipping, flipping the uh, drifter coins. Oh, yeah. God. Okay, so say for instance, drifter is that that uncle, that chaos right. factor, right? Right, right, right. And the possibility that us playing with the dark moat slows things down because we're quote unquote not that shining of a beacon anymore. Right. Does that actually play into? Is that a conscious thing? Not necessarily of him but of the ones that are kind of directing and pushing him forward with this, giving him more with that. Is that a directive of the Nine? Do we know that the Nine are the reason Gambit exists? The Nine are not the reason Gambit exists. Okay, Drifter so... created the bank. Created Gambit, right? He made the bank. Right. He made, okay. he made the game, but the Nine like him playing the game. They want him to continue playing the game. They want him to have more with the Hull and everything. That's how we get the reckoning. Sure, but that doesn't change the drifter's motivation. Gambit. So the, you know the, he might right, be being but that's, encouraged, but he's doing it because he wants to see what happens when the right. guardians play with dark stuff. Right, but that's how the nine work. The nine see you doing one thing, and they help you continue it if it benefits their cause. Uh-huh. Oh, and then we have you have a, a coordinator saying, "Cade did say the gambit." Said, I remember that actually. I remember that. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe Cade wasn't all the. You know the 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 all American Big Brother we thought he was. I you mean, know he was hanging out with really some. Think that? No, I guess not. But I think at the end of the day, <laughs> everybody thought Cade was all talk, right? Cade was also the crazy uncle. He just didn't bring around the cigarettes. He was the one that came with like six honeys and like yeah. drove a Corvette and yeah, or just had like a a, a six pack of beer and sharing it with everybody. Right. Yeah. Cade sent the Guardians of the Moon to get r- rip. Really? What? Come on. When? When did he send us? I th- All right, Blue. Yes. I think we should start moving in the direction of wrapping up. I think we've had really good discussions on a lot of different things <laughs> circling around <laughs> Gambit and the dangers of Gambit. But they Man, this sucks. Know. I want to play Gambit. You can't make me stop. <laughs> Dad. Dad. Uncle Teach. Uncle Teach has got the best stuff. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to have to do re- research on this gambit stuff. Okay, so here, let me ask uh, both of you. Blue verdict: Is gambit too dangerous? To- I think and try a- to take out the part where you like playing it. That yeah, has to no, not be. yeah, that has to not be in it. Um, I think like a- yeah, green green knows that that would negatively affect the answer. Um. I think oh, as far oh. as like the story goes, it's um, it's uh, pins and mentioned this above, but like the book, nothing or I think it was nothing ends or the what was the book that he mentioned? Do 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 nothing ends. Yeah. Um, and also the book of unmaking, like all that stuff, like he, they constantly are talking about the forced evolution and how forced evolution makes things stronger and makes things more powerful. And then you have like the concept of the eternal chain, which is what we kind of kind of talked about a couple weeks ago i want to say that it might be dangerous but you know everything in destiny is dangerous like sure crucible is dangerous because that's i mean shax shax says that all the time it's a training ground but you can get really messed up you see that with rhetoric reddix when he gets hit by shax like he's like right about that and his ghost like is like uh okay you didn't come back right um you know so (laughs) you like there's that entire like really funny scene of reddix coming back and being like i deba i deba deba and he's like everyone's like what the okay um so like i mean is it is it dangerous yes but i think a more important question is is it necessary and I, I, I'm kind of on the fence, but I, I kind of am leaning towards yes, it is necessary it because is it's, too. it's, if nothing else, it's exposing us to a different type of enemy. And the more exposure to those types of enemy, that more, that more experience that we get with that, um, the more knowledgeable we have to defend our home against whatever threats might come, whether or not we cause those threats, you know, that's, that's a that's a different conversation. Um, and it's kind of a chicken and egg conversation, right? You know, that's where I, I disagree with the idea of, you know, the, the Jedi Sith argument. If the Jedi don't exist, the Sith don't exist. Well, sure. If you're only talking about the titles, but there will always be people who take advantage of others. And there will always be people, there will always be people who try to defend others. You can call them whatever you want, 
but those that well, dichotomy will always exist. I mean, that's the whole point of what the Jedi and Sith are, right? So, like, no, yeah, uh, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's like you, but they're, you they're, call they're the them, same like, thing. They're just, yeah, they're doing it from different perspectives. They're doing it right. in different ways. You're just, you're, it would just be a matter of you're putting a different title on the same dichotomy. I think that Solus and Chat nailed it. Gambit might be the Force evolution first right, to yeah. kind of come out of, and that's what, being yeah, a and pins only. Yeah, Pins had mentioned that above too. It's like you know, okay. it, it's it's something that you know Shin talks about, um, and you know the whole the, the true shadows, if you want to refer to them as that, like you know the the whole uh, inner circle of the shadows. They're right. always talking about like that eternal chain. We are the next link in the chain. There will be another link after us, you know. And so it's it's this forced it's it's forcing us to step up. And say, okay, this is the threat that's on our doorstep. This is the wolf that's at the door. How are you going to handle it? You have to figure it out. You can't. Well, you can't hide from it. It's so. When, okay, so we had Forsaken happen, and then Gambit came out right after, right? Yep. Well, I mean, at, at the same. It, yeah, I think. Did they release at exactly the same time? I want to say Gambit you could play on day one. I was, could yeah, you? Okay. Gambit yeah. Prime so, came later, but right. I mean, right. Gambit, so yeah. Here's here's a theory. Do you think we would have killed Aldrin at the end of the Forsaken campaign had we not started diving into more of the dark, quote unquote, with Gambit? Do you think that uh, it kind of prepared us into that? You're also assuming that we killed Aldrin. I thought they confirmed it was Petra based on her initial dialogue with you the first time you talked to her. In the- Did they? I mean, I've always just kind of taken it as Bungie leaving it up to the interpretation of the player. Yeah, yeah. Pat, I mean, I, so, okay, but she says, and this is why I say this, she says the first time you approach her in her very long, drawn-out thing, hey, welcome to the Dreaming City, thanks for everything, it's been great, I love you, you're beautiful. <laughs> and then somewhere in that whole thing, <laughs> somewhere in there she sneaks in like, you know, I love you, I shot Aldrin, you have great shoes. Like, it's like, it was like, right. It's like really, it's very glazed over, which is why I don't know if I trust it fully, but I think she says something and I'll try to actually, she says something to the effect of like, you know, I don't know. uh, I I didn't, I'm sorry if you feel like I took your choice away from you or something like that. It was like, it was something that was very indicative of, um, I shot Aldrin, you know, and didn't wait for you to make up your mind. Um, So (laughs) I'm not really because I wanted her opinion of my shoes. Uh, yeah, she's, um, she, yeah, she's there. This when she gives you first of a hundred million sidearms. Yeah. I mean, I guess, okay. So, so like if she did say that though, if she's actually the one that did it, then I don't know if I would agree agree because I don't know if, if, if that was ever our, if that was actually a choice we got to make and if Gambit would have had any, I don't know. That's, that is, that adds another whole layer to it. Yeah. I'm looking right now. Cause I mean, like when, when I, when I remember playing it, um, my whole thing was like my I'm, in my interpretation, my guardian didn't do it because I, I it. was actually I was Pens actually got it. which if you think back to the cutscene, that's why I remember it this way. It's because she's the one that that is holding that gun. You're holding right. Ace of Spades, but or, did, or the broken Ace of Spades it, couldn't have been a joint thing that you both shot because the audio tracks, if you line up both the Vestian audio track and the Ace of Spades audio track, it sounds like the shot that happened, that both guns went off. So could, and that was the whole debate, right? Like, which which gun actually did it? That's why everybody got into the crazy mm-hmm. um, debates on whether or not this audio track is this, and this actually matches up with what they did. Could, that line would still make sense. I, I suppose if, if it was simultaneous. Shot. But then why, is, why would Shax and all these people spend so much time but isn't it Zavala that's like, I, I can't imagine if you, it doesn't matter. Don't tell me like, or whatever, like, you right. know, like, but like I, they, 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 they go to such great lengths to, to make it seem so did you do it or did you not? But then what I'm hearing from you is that it's pretty obvious if you just listen to the game that you did. But that that's the whole point. You get to choose. That's what Blue was trying to say is that. Yeah. Cause if what I'm saying is like, Oh, it was a man. If that's right. Yeah. Cause like if, if it's, if it's a matter of, did you shoot him or not? And because, like, I was, I honestly, I was not happy with the way they did the the campaign because the entire time they're like, oh, it's just hatred. Oh, it's just hatred. Oh, it's, I'm like, my guardian in my playthrough, I'm like, no, it's not. Like, actually, 
I don't like, I mean, and I know that's an unpopular opinion, but I, it, but I kept feeling like they were trying to key, you know, keyhole us into this. Oh, our guardians going dark, but like they kept, it felt like they kept forcing us into the choice of, okay, you're going to go to, you're going to go to the dark side. You're going to go to the dark side. You're going to, and that actually made me rebel against it because I was like, what if I don't want to? Like you, there was no choice in how I played that campaign, and so like when that final cutscene happened, if they're saying that no, your guardian shot him, I'm like, okay, you should. If you're gonna make us be such a catalyst for such a big point, give us a button prompt to at least give us the illusion of a choice there. Like I don't care, I don't care if you mass effect it, but, sure. but you know, like give us an option I agree. instead of just saying this is linear. You're shooting him, like uh. I like giving it that leave it up for interpretation mm-hmm. thing because I think that it really it cause a it causes this debate to happen all the time, right? So that's that's one of the things beauties of what it causes is did you shoot him or did you not? Did my guardian personally shoot him? Yes. My guardian totally shot him. Now, did Petra shoot him at the same time perhaps? Or did Petra shoot him alone? That's I just think it's such an intentional line from her to deliver that that I it, Oh, I, it could be. Like they could have written anything into that that moment, you know, like a- anything that 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 gives her an excuse to give you any number of infinite pieces of loot that Destiny does, and instead, the one thing they choose to do is to say, "This is the weapon that shot Aldrin." Mm. I just, yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying. I I I, I heard the ace shot in the cutscene too, which is, I think, what well, again, what leaves it open. Here's mm-hmm. here's a here's a, an idea, which is that maybe. They do give you the prompt that Blue wants, right? But then you and your heart of hearts player character guardian know for sure that what you chose. But uh, then back at the tower, you can have the exact yes. same sets of conversations yes. because it, you don't get to tell anybody. Yet. You get to keep that to, comp- you have to, keep it to yourself. I'd be 100% okay you don't with that. Know that you, right? Yeah, I agree. That's what I would want. There's your hybrid because then you're not changing anything about the game. You're not changing anything about you're not bringing Mass Effect choices into uh, Destiny, which would never happen. Mm-hmm. But but in because it would change dialogue and all these different things. No, no, no. But just give us that, like you called it, Blue, an illusion of choice. Have the conversation be the same and force the player to live with the choice and not be able to share it or have anybody even want to know the <laughs> truth. I like Doom's interpretation. I shot his ear off. Petra shot him right between the eyes. <laughs> Sounds like Doom needs to like like ABS a little more. Pull that up tight. Oh gosh. Okay, so regardless of who shot Aldrin in debate, Gambit is not dangerous. (laughs) Gambit is not dangerous. Gambit is our way of starting down that path, and I think it was an easy way for us to start down the path because how do you? How? What's the best way to teach a child? Present it in a game. Give him cigarettes. Thanks, Uncle Drifter. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Teach. You got it, kiddo. Get out there and try some fire. Yee. <laughs> Transmet fire. So shout outs. Oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Final shout outs for the week for the topic. Teach. Uh if you want to find Big Daddy Teach streaming on Mixer, head on over there and check him out. Sat of Destiny, 9 a.m. Central. I need I'll to... be there. My grandma was too. Transmit firing. As long as you're not eating a Vex or a Scorn or sucking at a Minotaur's teat. Well, Ever suck a Vex milk from a Minotaur's teat? <laughs> Transmit firing. Wait, wait, don't tell me what happened. What are you, what's the answer to the question? <laughs> Womp. There you are, landing on the map. Wait, no, come back. Uncle Teach. I need an adult. Uh, I need an adult. This is fine. <laughs> oh gosh ah uh, shout out for me again big thank you for teach for making this happen for coming out and joining us on that it's been a blast it's me i've had yeah i as far as Even other shout outs yeah thank you for joining us um bit other shout outs shout outs to live chat you guys are flipping hilarious and i have to mute my mic more often on these kind of nights when you guys get going like this than i do on any other episode it's just thank you for showing up thank you for being here every friday night a lot of you are kind of regulars we love you you are our people i don't know where i'm going with this blue take it away bye (laughs) but seriously 
<laughs> thanks, Wicked, for all. Thank, thanks, Wicked, for mm. all the memes. I I think I'm. I have a lot of memes that are in my inbox now from Wicked, and they're he all transmit and they're all transmit firing, and they're all oh, terrifying. I can't wait. I can't I'm, wait. I'm supposed to send them all to see. teach. Yeah, I, I want to read them. I want. <laughs> I ever tell you about the time I put a captain's face mask on my own face? I've talked like this for a whole month. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Tell us so about you- Fowl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> and on that note, transmit firing. <laughs> I think it's the end. <laughs> Question mark? Question oh, mark? God. Oh. With that, we'll begin to wrap the chat up. Thank you again to those over on Twitch for coming to spend your evening with us. If you'd like to join us for the live streaming of the episodes, please be sure to give us a follow over on twitch.tv slash focused fire chat. Links to all our episode archives can also be found at www.focusfirechat.com. Please be sure to email us at focusfirechat at gmail.com with any comments or questions for our team concerning the podcast and let us know how we're doing by giving us some feedback and a rating over on iTunes as well. Also, be sure to check out all the amazing work being featured over on the lorenetwork.com. So until next time, focus your fire and may your light shine bright.